Hey guys, Shocker from Shocky Tech, and in today's video, we have some great news. One UI 4.1 is now rolling out to other Samsung Galaxy smartphones. So it is not just the S22 anymore. We have an S21 right here that just got the One UI 4.1 update with a whole ton of new features that I'm going to demonstrate in this video. But also for those who are wondering which phones are gonna get the One UI 4.1 update, here's a list, this is an official list directly from Samsung. So One UI 4.1, all the features in this video are gonna gradually roll out to all these phones. Anyway, let's dive in and let me show you guys what's up with this massive update. So like I said, this is the S21 Ultra. If I go to my settings, if I go all the way down, go to software update, Tap on last update, you can see we have the 4.1 update. We have a whole bunch of changes I'm gonna demonstrate in this video. And of course, at the bottom, you are gonna see that the size of this guy is 1,567 megabytes. And it ends in CVC4. So let's dive in and see what's going on. All right, so let's quickly take a look at the new camera features. So when I go into my camera application, it's right over here. When I go to my portrait options, let's just uh, flip to the front camera. If I go to my portrait shots over here, now I can do portrait shots at three times zoom. And that is gonna be optical zoom. Previously, we were just limited to the regular camera at 1x. Now you can go all the way to 3x, which is great. Now the next thing that has changed in the camera is if you go into the pro video mode or the pro photo mode, this one, or this one, you are now able to zoom in even further in the pro mode. So previously, you were not able to go all the way up to, let me just show you, 20 times. So now, even in video, under pro mode, you can zoom in further. Now let's quickly look at the photo side here. I'm gonna go to more, tap on pro. Let's see how far we can go here. So with this one, we can go all the way to 10 times uh, for the photo. 20 times for the video. Now the next feature has to do with the director's view. So if I go to more, and if I go to director's view, you get the usual option as you can see, but if you were to press this button right here, now what you can do is as you record using the director's view, which uses the front and the rear camera at the same time, when you press this button, you will able to save both videos from the rear and the front separately. Previously, if you recorded this, it will record the video on the rear camera and the front camera. It would just be one file and you would see both of those in the background. Now you can have them save as separate videos, which gives you even further capability to edit videos in post-processing. So that's the camera. That's all fantastic. Let's move on. We also have a new feature in relation to connected audio. So if you have a Bluetooth device attached to your phone, there is now a new option. If you go to your settings, uh, if you go into accessibility, and if you go to hearing enhancements, at the bottom, uh, you're able to change the audio balance for connected audio. So let's say maybe your right ear hears better than your left ear. So you're getting more noise on your right ear and less noise on your left ear, which makes things sound a little bit uneven, you can adjust it from here by uh, moving this dial and get the perfect audio balance. You can do it for connected audio and also the phone speakers. So that's fantastic. All right, the next changes come in the gallery application. So let me launch the gallery. Now let's say you took a photo with the photo mode, but you took a motion photo like this one, a motion photo, takes a photo, but also saves a little bit of video before and after the photo. So if I tap on this view motion photo, you can see it's got a little bit of video, but mostly it was supposed to be a picture. Now, that takes a lot of space. So if I pull this up, you'll see this is 6.8 megabytes. Now to save space, if you do not need the motion part of that photo, you can tap on this button and you can delete the video clip attached to that photo. So the motion part is gonna be gone and now you only have the JPEG, just a static picture. When I pull this up, it's gonna be 2.42 megabytes. 
So if you do this to all your motion photos that you don't really need, you're gonna be saving a lot of space. On top of that, if you take a photo with the photo mode, so I'm talking about this. If I go to camera, you have the portrait and the photo. If you take a picture with the regular photo mode, you don't get that background blur that you get in the portrait mode. So with the new software, what you can do is with 4.1, you can tap over here and you can say, add portrait effect afterwards. So look at this. We are gonna get a background blur and I can make that strong as you can see. So now I can convert any photo to a portrait photo. And then I can apply that and we are gonna be good to go. Now on top of that, I'm gonna show you one more thing. By the way, after you convert, you'll see it says portrait on the top here. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you guys, if you do launch the camera, and if you go to portrait mode, and then if you take a photo, after you take the photo, there is so much more you can do. So here's a photo taken with the portrait camera mode. I can tap on change background effect, all right? And let's say I'm gonna use the, uh, the studio effect. Now if I tap on this guy, I can choose where the lighting actually applies on my face. So look at this, tap, boom. So now the light, it's as if in the studio, the light was coming from this way. Or I can tap it, I can go like this. Uh, let's tap over here. Now the lights on my forehead, I can go at the bottom. Look at that, you can get any effect that you want and you can intensify the effect as you can see. Look at that, intensification. So all this can be done after you take a photo with the portrait mode, you get all this additional editing available in the gallery app. Now the next update that we have comes to the remaster option. So the gallery has a remaster feature. The feature is not new, but it's now enhanced. So if you have any photo that needs to be remastered and you tap on this button, if it's eligible for remaster, you're gonna see this option here. You can click on it that's gonna analyze and remaster the photo and give you a better version of what you had previously. And then you can do a before and after using this bar. If you like the new version, you tap on save. If not, you just go back, you move on. So that feature has been enhanced as well. Now, another great feature that we have is if you go to your settings, all right, and if you go all the way down to battery and device care, you tap on this guy, under memory right here, you are now able to modify the amount of virtual RAM you have. So if we get the bottom here, it says RAM plus, you tap on it, you can go from two, four, six to eight gigabytes. Whenever you make a change, it's gonna ask you to restart your phone to reconfigure it for proper operation. Uh, but by default, it is at four. I think that is enough because this phone at least already has uh, 12 gigabytes of RAM, plus you get the virtual RAM. So that's plenty of RAM to get maximum performance. So modifiable RAM plus. Now, another new feature is this feature right here. If you pinch the screen and go to your widgets, you now have brand new smart widgets. Already made a video on this one, so I'm gonna pull that video in to show you exactly what this is and all its features. So here's the smart widgets, as you can see. So they are widgets within widgets. So you can have widgets and scroll through various different widgets. And of course, the good news is this smart widget module is completely customizable. You can remove or add any widget you want. And of course, a bunch of people ask me, how did I get this widget right here? That is a circular music player widget. I'm gonna show you that as well. So to access these smart widgets, let me just create a brand new screen here. All right, this one, press and hold, tap on widgets, and they are gonna be right here on the top. And what you have is you have three different sizes. You have a two by two, a four by one, and a four by two. Let's look at this one right here. So when you want to actually activate this widget, you just grab it and dump it anywhere on the screen. You can also resize them if necessary, all right? And by default, you get three widgets to get you started. Let me just set this up here, all right? So in the previous video, I did not mention the fact that when you press and hold on any one of these widgets, you are able to go into the setting by tapping right here on the current widget settings, 
and modify that particular widget as you can see. So I can make it black, that is not black, but the other ones still remain what they normally are. So again, press and hold, tap on the current widget settings, the one you would be looking at, all right? And you can modify that as you can see, all right? And there's a whole bunch of options here uh, to modify them even further based on your needs. So you can make it look really nice and cool. Now on top of that, another thing you can do is, for example, let's say I don't want this guy right here. Press and hold, I get to remove this. Or if I want to add something, I can press and hold, alrighty, and I can add a widget. Let's grab the Samsung Notes widget, alright, I'm going to grab this guy right here. Uh, single note, just dump it right here. Press and hold, actually just tap on it, and I can have a single note show up in there, okay? So if it's a drawing, you can show your drawing right through the widget. All right, so next up what you can do is you can press and hold and you can tap on the settings button right here. When you tap on this settings button, you are able to access the widget from here as well and make modifications from here. So look, I can add widgets from here and I do get a slightly different screen so I can have the device info widget. Let me just tap this right here. Now I have one, two, three, four widgets. And if I go back out, it is going to be in here, as you can see. So that's another way to do it. This way you can do it visually. Press hold or just tap on the main settings. And this is the smart widget settings, as you can see. And also, if you press and hold on these guys, you can reorder the widgets as you please. All right? Just so you know. And if you want to remove them, you can select and remove so it is also a different way to customize the screen, but the reorder is the best feature. Easily reorder instead of having to recreate the widget. All right, you can do auto rotate widgets. This one, just make sure this one is not in use. Don't even click on it. All right, so when you go back, it gets dumped to the screen. Now, uh, the circular widget that's over here actually is the YouTube music widget. So if you do use YouTube music, let me swipe over. So if you do use YouTube music, you can press and hold and you can tap on add a widget. And then when you go all the way down, YouTube music is going to give you that uh, circular widget, which is pretty cool. So when you click on it, that's what you get. You can play and pause right from here. That particularly looks quite amazing. So if you have YouTube music, download the software and just dump that widget. Now, another update that is pretty important has to do with optimization of your phone. So that is right here. It's the game optimizing service. So previously, there was a limitation that ran, ran at the background. So if your phone was running a game at maximum performance, Samsung would throttle that game to make sure the phone doesn't overheat, which could reduce the performance of the actual game. Now they actually have removed that limitation, made it a little bit better, and also have given you an additional option under the game launcher. So if I go to my game launcher right here, tap on it, and if I tap on more, and go into my game booster, at the bottom, I, I'm gonna have the labs option. You tap on this guy, and that is the alternate game performance management. Now this kills all the limiters, but not all of them, but most of them, so you can get the maximum performance in games, which could cause a little bit extra heating, but it shouldn't be a big deal. But you have this option. So if you if you think your uh, game is not performing properly, enable this button, you get an additional boost of performance. Alrighty, so that's an important update that also has been applied to the S21 series. We also have an enhanced color palette. So if I pinch the screen and go to my wallpaper and style and go over here, uh, we have an enhanced color palette that's going to appear even in more applications. So this basically extracts the colors from your current wallpaper and gives you a bunch of customization options. It is now more rich, more colorful, and it extends to more parts of the phone to give you that unique style. So that is absolutely fantastic. Look at that, we have that green. As I change the colors, things change all over the phone much more than before. Now there's a couple more updates that I think are not that important. It's hard to demonstrate them, but you have some enhancements to Google Duo. 
You can actually join video calls in a presentation mode. So for example, if you're in a video call with somebody, you can actually share your screen with that person. You can also share another app's screen during a video call. So if I'm talking to somebody on Google Duo and I'm watching a YouTube video, I can share that video on their phone so they can see the video I'm seeing and we can continue to talk together. So that's a great update. And then we have a Samsung Health update. Uh, we have some enhanced exercise tracking, better tracking of your sleep, and better insights on your body composition. So personally, probably will not be using these myself a lot, but they're there. Uh, I, I think they might be impo important for some people. So yeah, that's basically most of the major One UI 4.1 features coming to many phones gradually over the next couple months. S21, Z Fold 3, and the Flip 3 are going to be among the first. As you can see, S21 already got it. Any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know. For now, guys, have a fantastic day. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.